Hey, 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 y'all, and welcome back to another segment here on GEMS Podcast. For those of you that are new to the community, I am Miss Genesis Amaris Kemp, the founder and host. For those seasoned listeners, thank you so much for diving into another segment. With me today is Ahmad Vital, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more on who Ahmad is. So Ahmad is a motivational consultant, international speaker, and author has he has empowered people globally with his inspirational guidance and tips for self-development. Amal provides his audience with the tools needed to achieve personal success, utilize their willpower, and develop strategies that allows people of all ages to achieve personal and professional excellence. So for nearly a decade, he has been studying the performance habits of highly achieving athletes, He has developed programs of inspiration and motivation that are beneficial to individuals, professionals, companies, and organizations worldwide. And now what? Five steps to get up and create the most of life. But you know what? Who wants to sit here and read a long bio? Let's welcome the man behind it all, Ahmad Vital. Thank you for having me on. My pleasure, Ahmad. And I know we have one thing in common already. We're both Eustonians here in Clutch City. So. Mm. I- <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. So I dive into the connection segment, which allows the audience to get to know you, professional and personal. So there are two options to choose from. We could either do a rapid fire 10 question game or an icebreaker, what are you in the mood for? Ooh, rapid fire or an icebreaker? You know what, rapid fire, because I have no clue where you're going with this. So let's do it. (laughs) Okay, y'all, here we go. We're playing rapid fire with Genesis and the bar. Do, 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 do. Question number one, the vibes are nice. You're in your whip, cranking up the tunes. What are you listening to? (laughs) <laughs> oh man this is this is interesting because I've, I've i've dropped most of my my old school rap lyrics but you know what there's a clean song from back in the day i'll go i'll go old school i'm gonna be jamming some it takes two with, from rob bass and dj easy rock okay so question two audience i'm not sure if you know that song but if you're like me let's put them to a test i want you to sing part of that song <laughs> It takes two to make things go right. Yeah. It takes two to make it out of sight. I want to rock right now. I'm a bass and I came to get down. I'm not internationally known, but I'm known to rock the microphone because I get stupid. I mean, outrageous. Stay away from me if you're contagious because I'm the man. Yeah. So. Oh, there he goes, y'all. So he just dropped bars. Question <laughs> number three. Are you that type of guy that is lounging around playing video games Going to the gym, or you just never know what you're going to get. Oh, going to the gym for sure. Okay. Question four. What's your favorite food? A bacon cheeseburger. Okay. Okay. Question five. I know you focus on team ministry as part of your work. What is one scripture that is your staple scripture? Hmm. I'll probably go with Romans 12 and 2. Be not conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, question six. If you had the opportunity to trade places with anyone for 24 to 72 hours, would you trade places or remain a mod Vital? I would remain a mod Vital. Question seven. What's one word to describe you? energetic question eight would you rather a dream car dream home or heck let's go big and have both it's a dream car dream home or both yes well yeah you got to go both if you're going to give me the option otherwise i'd take the house okay (laughs) question nine if you could have lunch or dinner with any person past or present who would it be Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Oh, and I'm going to follow up with that. Why? 
I, I think that he he had so many losses in his life. He had so much adversity. And then he turned around and, you know, did so many great things, whether it's talking about the emancipation, uh, you're talking about all the stuff he did through the, you know, led us through the Civil War and things of that nature. I just think that I'd like to pick his brain a little bit and see what was going on. Okay. And question 10, it is our pass or play question, and here are the rules. If you pass, our roles are reversed, and you could ask me a question. If you choose to play, I ask one last question to wrap up rapid fire. So do you want to pass or play? So you said if I say pass, then we're done here? If you say or... pass, you get to ask me a question. If you say play, I ask you one last question. You know what? Let's uh, it's let's rapid pass. fire. It's okay, <laughs> what's your question? Um, what is a part of your morning routine before you get started with your day? Ooh, this has changed now that I have a seven month old. So normally I would kind of lay in bed and kind of lounge around and then you know do the Bible and stuff like that. But now it's like no ham, no cheese, no turkey. When my daughter gets up. I better get up. <laughs> Every day is something different because kids are unpredictable, especially at seven months. Fair enough. And congratulations. Um, I wasn't here seven months ago, so I'll just, we'll just have to play catch up and tell you congratulations now. Thank you so much. And audience, that concludes our connection segment. So I hope you learned a little bit more about a mod personally and professionally. Now we're going to dive in to the meat and potatoes of the conversation, the main segment. So Ahmad, you're focusing on teen ministry. How do we combat the social attacks that children are facing today? Because social media has a big influence. Peer pressure has a big influence. And let's be real, depending on where that teen is located, what their environment is, their parents may be working you know, one, two jobs or whatever the case may be. And they may not have time to spend that uninterrupted, undivided time with their children because they're trying to, you know, provide for them. So what led you to get involved with teen ministry? Uh, that's a great question. And um, I, I've obviously my career started off, I've been a writer pretty much my whole life. And I noticed as I was going through life, you know, obviously I came up as a sports writer. I've always been in media. And obviously I worked uh, in a lot in high school sports and that catapulted into a little bit of college as well. But, and obviously when I wrote my first book in 2011, which was Awaken the Baller Within, I started going around to different schools and speaking on it. And I started noticing that as my speaking career grew, I was getting to go into different places, small businesses, some corporations, nonprofits, you know, some hospitals. I was going, uh, I was going all over the place, sports camps. But I noticed over like a seven to 10 year period, my common denominator is as I was looking for my demographic or, you know, what am I going to kind of put, hang my head on? I just noticed that what was the common denominator that, that, you know, late teens versus early twenties. And so I started leaning in on that. And I remember at the church I was at before I'm at where I, was at, where I am now, I was at a Wednesday service and they had me speak there and the assistant youth and family director was there and was like, would you mind doing a three-part seminar with our teens? And I was like, yeah, no problem. And I remember ended up doing a three-part series doing that. And every week the group grew. Like it was like 25. Next thing you know, it was closer to 40. And next thing you know, we're pulling in chairs and more tables. And there were parents coming up to me saying, we just love what you were doing. I'm like, do you, hello, how are you doing? Like, I don't even, like, I don't even know who you all are. But, you know, I'm grateful for that. And then after the three weeks, um, they said, you know, would you like to stick around and be a, a volunteer? And I was like, you know, we'll try it. I'll see what happens. I ended up and another man brought me along, uh, taught me the ministry. Uh, we did that for three years. Our, our ministry grew about 40 percent from the time we started and we had it rocking and rolling. And of course, I left right after COVID. Um, but when you start looking at, you know, where the youth is today, um, mm -hmm. it's it's a conversation that would take us probably a 10 part series based on what we have going on here. Um, but I will say first and foremost, before we can do anything, which this is a, a bold assessment, but you have to rebuild from the foundation and the foundation is the home. Um, mm -hmm. The home has been fractured. The home has been decimated. Actually. I mean, you know, we can 
we could go on for days as to how we got here, uh, starting all the way back from the late 60s. But the bottom line is, is that we are we are fighting a battle um, that is bigger than just surface level things. This is a spiritual battle. This is a cultural battle. And this is a societal battle. But it all, all stems from the fact that there are nefarious forces out there that are doing its best and somewhat succeeding and tearing the family apart, putting uh, children against parents, parents mm -hmm. against the children, um, and just teaching them that it's better to do things alone. And that is such a, a, a direct blow to not only what everything the Bible says, but just what, what societies have been built on. Societies have always been built on community. Societies yeah. have always been built on the whole, you know, my mother used to say the village or whatever, but villages start with community. Community starts with family. And when you remove one or both of the parents out of the family, of course, crime rates are going to be up. Of course, dropouts are going to be up. Of course, um, you know, teen pregnancy is going to be going up. Mental health. I mean, the list goes on. But all of that stems from the fact that going all the way back to, you could say, you know, starting in the 40s, but definitely decimated in the 50s and 60s. It's, it's, the, it's the family. So that, let's pause here really quick, Amon, because I want to ask a, qu a question that's going to tie into what you're talking about now. And I'm going to use you and I both as examples. So I'm in my early 30s now. Do you mind disclosing your age range here? I'm 44. Okay. And I want both of us to think about the home environments that we grew up into and think about what we grew up into and reflect on where we are now. And do you see a big difference in how our parents and our parents and the generation we grew up in in comparison to where we are now? And because I believe this is going to, to tie back into some of the examples you you give because there's a lot of advantages as well as disadvantages. Well yes, I mean I came up I came up in a in a two parent home that was that was broken. Um, but my mother remarried um, probably pretty, pretty quickly. Um, so I never was bereft of, of male influence in my life. And of course, I played sports. So I had strong male figures around my life forever. And I will say that, you know, when I was coming up, I grew up in a small Texas town. Uh, for those of you all who've ever heard of New Caney, uh, the big Metroplex down 59. Uh, I grew up out there. And for the most part on parents night, most of us had parents. Most of us had our uh, two parents there. Um, there may have been, out of 50 of us, there may have been five to seven of us who didn't. But I know by the time I started covering sports coming out of coming out of high school, I mean, coming out of college, I mean, you're talking, depending on the area, 60, 40, 70, 30. And then some, you know, in best case scenario, you're looking at 80, 20 in favor of having a mother and a, fa a father and mother in house. Um, so that does have a lot to do with it. And we can tell that it was already happening when we were coming up. It just didn't, it just didn't, it, it's, it amplified quickly. Mm -hmm. Like I said, most of our, most of our classmates, most of us had our father and mother in the house. But by the time we came out of college, but definitely by the time I came out of college, it, the game had already just been, th those numbers went up through the roof and not in the right direction. And, you know, there's, there's a tons of reasons why that, why that happens, I'm pretty sure we don't have time to hit on all of those, but mm -hmm. there's some there's some really dire things that have happened that um, it's going to take a lot to be able to stem the ties in a better direction. Yeah, and I'll share my part here for the audience. So I'm first generation American. So my mother is West Indian and my father is Caribbean descent. So, and my parents would have been married for 31 years up until my dad's sudden passing in November of 2020. So the way that I was raised was, different than a traditional African-American family based on my cultural upbringing. And I did have two parents in the household, although my dad was the one that was always present in school activities because my mom always poured her time into work. So the reason why I bring this up is for anyone listening, even though some, some of you may have two parents household, there may be a parent that works more than the other. And you could feel like that parent is absent whenever that parent is present, 
you know, present monetarily, but physically they're absent for whatever the circumstances may be. And that does not mean that your parents don't love you any less or anything like that. It's based on the circumstances of the household and so forth. So when we, whenever we look at today's society and we see how the kids are, you know, vying for all this attention, there's people pleasing, there's the imposter syndrome, there's, you know, the rates of suicides are increasing. So, um, some of the stuff that the teachers are can and cannot do within the public education system, I feel like all of these layers are being compounded on these children. And if we don't have these real conversations where the kids can see us as a person that they can trust, they're not going to open up and tell us what's going on in their world, in my opinion. So whenever we think about those kids that are involved in teen ministries and et cetera, they have an extended family that they can go to where they can feel seen, heard, they have love and all of those things on a holistic level. But what happens when we remove them from the ministry, the church, which is just a building and et cetera, and they go back into their home and they don't see that. How can we help those kids, you know, keep on the same track and combat the things that they're faced with on a daily basis? Because being a teenager is hard, y'all. I see it from my nieces and nephews and every now and then I will check the kid in a loving way. Well, um, I do agree with you that the church is definitely um, a community extended. And I'll say this, and I'm not saying that when you leave from the church, because um, I don't exactly see church from as a physical building. Uh, church is a community of believers. Um, the church follows with you. Um, the light travels with you. And so when, you know, when we, and I mean, I can I can't speak for other ministries, but with our ministry, our ministry goes beyond the walls of the physical building. Yes, you're under our tutelage and our care when you're in that building. But when you extend out of that, um, our teams can reach out to us whenever they're ready from all the way down from the from the youth pastors down to the leaders like myself. Um, that door is wide open. Now, obviously, we can't be in their home with them, but at least we let them know that they're not only loved, but there's the community extends outside of this. We we attend some of our, our teens' uh, activities. Um, their signing days, their, their swim meets, their basketball games, their, their soccer events, graduations. Like, we're there. they let us know we're there. And so you, the home is the foundation, but when the home is, is, is removed, there is still a way for you to be able to build a community around a young boy or young girl. And they need to know that that's there for them. That's why we do stress community. Um, the home obviously is going to be the, the foundation. And if that's broken, we do our best to try to at least put some good solid planks under you if we can't put cement under you. And so there is a way to be able to sort of stem the tide. It's not ideal, but we're going to do the best with what we can with the materials we have. And if we have, as long as we have the word on our side and we have a good heart to serve, we put our we put the teen in the best optimal position to be able to make some things happen. But Yes, the church, the church walks with us. The church is on this podcast with you right now. That is amazing. So it, is your church one of like a smaller church or like a mega church or anything like that? Since y'all do have like the bandwidth to go to different events that the kids invite, invite you all to and et cetera. Our church right now, I think holds about 900, but it's funny you say that because we're actually in a capital campaign right now to expand our church to 3,200 because during COVID we, um, we expect, like we grew like exponentially, like literally from the time I started there, I went there October, 2020 by before October, 2021 of the following year, we had to knock a wall out of the church to put more seats in there. Right. It, it was, it was all like, we're busting at the seams right now. I think we, we run about 50. It seems like we run just every day. Someone is using the church because our, the way our church is structured, um, we're for the community. And so if the community needs to use it for, for meetings, for different uh, groups, we have all sorts of groups coming through there for people who are travelers, people. We got a car ministry. Like we have so we have a ministry for just about anything you can think of 
And our pastors like the doors are open for you to come through here, conferences, different things of that nature. And so we're actually building an entire infrastructure around our church going forward with this campaign where it's going to be um, senior citizen place, a, a place for single moms. Uh, our garage is going to be to, to, to fix cars of widows, veterans, uh, veterans, wives and, and, and widows and single mothers. We have another place where it's going to have a, a movie theater where it's going to play Christian movies the whole time. Like we are, we're we are rocking this thing out because the community needs healing, and we we need to be the place where the community can come and know that they are being taken care of. They're not going to be sold uh, nefarious things of of the different ideologies that are going on today that have been totally destructive to our teens and to just people at large. Right? We're going to 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 put you know, godly principles in front of, uh, of people to be able to take in this community type of feel. So our church is about to be larger, but right now, right now, I think we're somewhere between eight, eight to seven, eight, nine hundred. Um, I'm not good at math when it comes to how many are shared in there, but I do know we're, we're packing it out, but we're adding, we're adding to get up to 3,200 with our new center that we're putting together as a two-year campaign. That's amazing. Expansion and growth and the servant leadership and what y'all are envisioning for the community, what y'all are planting and the seeds that y'all are sowing. So whenever you uh, see the expansion and the growth, what is the church's um, mission statement or brand brand campaign? And, and is that the same throughout the young adults and teen ministry? Uh, the, the campaign, the campaign, uh, I know that we're, the main thing we're doing is making room for multiplication, uh, is sort of the, the big campaign. There's so much marketing material out on this and I don't have all of those on, on, on top of me right now, but I do know that we want to be a place where you can come and get all the services you need, like everything you need. Like I said, from the gym, uh, senior, senior citizen. Uh, there's there's uh, movies, there's going to be entertainment, there's going to be shops, there's going to be stores. All of these different things are going to be available, a place for you, you can have concerts, uh, all of those things. And so it's it's almost going to be, you know, Cynthia Woods Mitchell Pavilion on church grounds, right? Yeah. Uh, a, a miniature movie theater on church grounds, you know, your local nursing home on church grounds, um, you know, your local 24-hour LA fitness on church grounds. You know, we're doing we're doing a number of those things, but we want to be a place where people of the community can come. You can drop your children off there and don't have to worry about them coming back, looking at you sideways, thinking that like I don't care that you're my father and mother anymore. We want, we want, you know, God, we want families to be able to stay together and be able to know that their their kids aren't being shared something that's not going to be advantageous for their life moving forward because there's enough of that going on right now like you said, from the social media and the different places and even in the schools as well, that there's a lot of, there's a lot of bad actors in a lot of, in a lot of our, uh, our social society and institutions. I love that. So y'all, if you have a teen in the Houston area, you can help them by riding through town, listening to your Jesus beats and plug in with a mod. That is not any lyrics by me. That's from Lecrae. So don't, don't get me sued y'all. Um, so if you could give five top tips for parents and teens listening to this segment to help them combat societal norms and pressures, what would those five tips be? For one, um, I would say limit the use of, of the phones. Um, I know this is going to sound draconian, but even if you wanted to go this route with it, whether it, whether you're putting, I don't want to say spyware, but some type of, uh, some kind of, some sort of tracking system or just completely eliminate social media altogether. And I know that's, con you're like, oh my goodness, my kid's off the grid. Um, sometimes we have to make, all, we have to make some drastic measures to get some things done. Um, I, I don't know at what age you probably should start doing that. You'll know your kid better than, than, than others. Um, but I don't see anyone under the age of 12 needing to be on social media whatsoever. That's just my opinion. Somebody can take that as, as they want. Um, that would be the first thing. Second thing is put them in something after school that keeps them busy. Um, I would say for my guys, I want my guys in competitive sports, um, some sort of competitive sports, something where there's a clear winner and a loser. I don't want to hear anything about your participation and your, you know, you know, you signed up and everyone wins because no, everybody doesn't win. That's just not how life works. Um, we need, we need, we need competition. We need, you know, 
mano mano. We need some strength. We need some things, some things that are going to teach you teamwork, some things that'll teach you discipline, some things that'll teach you accountability. And sports will do that for you. And so you need to do that. But for those, if you find out your kid is not too athletic, put them in some sort of extracurricular activity so that they have something to be accountable for, something that they can, something to where if you if you have a discipline issue, that this is something they actually care about and there's a consequence for not handling it correctly. Um, put all the phones up uh, for dinner time as best as best as possible. Sit down with your people at, at dinner time and, and discuss uh, discuss today, I would suggest either 30 to 45 minutes, upwards of an hour um, to sit down and talk with your with your children. Find out what's going on in their life. Even if they shun you, just, you know, tell them how much you love them and, and share your, your challenges and wins for the day. Not just your wins, your challenges and your wins. We want to see um, where we can make some possible uh, adjustments. Also, um, get your kids reading as soon as possible. Um, we have a we have a very bad epidemic in this country of kids not being able to read and they're in third or fourth grade. That is just that is that is unacceptable. Um, read to them, which by the way, with you having a seven month old, um, yes, uh, break some good books out for for them and just just get them in the mode of not only hearing the word but also you know starting to get into reading it as well. So get some books out, uh, maybe something that you do together as a family. And I think lastly, I would just say, you know, listen, listen, everybody's, um, there. there's so much noise. And, and by the way, that, that question just kind of came out of nowhere. So I'm, I'm, I'm rapid fire on these questions as well. Uh, I want you to listen, listen to, listen to what they're, listen to what's going on in their lives. Um, so many kids are just pulling in and they're using social media. They're using TikTok. They're using Instagram to, to raise them, to, to teach them. And if you haven't looked at what's going on on social media, please do. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of garbage on there. I will say there's probably more garbage than good. Um, I don't dip into those waters too much, but luckily I have enough people around me who give me the 411 on what's going on so that I know where the enemy is so that I can put my teens in the best position to win. So I do dip my toes over into those waters because I do need to hear some of those lyrics um, that's going on so that I know how to tell them like, oh, yes. I see what you're doing because see, that's the thing. The enemy's going after the kids because the kids are still malleable. See, the, kids, the enemy doesn't come after me. The enemy knows where I'm at. But see, the thing is, he doesn't want he doesn't want us to know what you're up to. But see, once once I start understanding and I get some translations, I go to my 24 year old niece, I go to my 19 year old nephew, and I'm like, hey, what is that song saying again? And it's just like, it'll say this, this, this. It's like, oh. Ah, that's over a kid's head, but I know what they're talking about. So um, yeah. we're gearing up and we're going to battle. So listen to them, see what's going on, uh, be be active in their lives. Um, even if you have to work as much as possible, try to try to make that person that that time personal. Whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's sometime in the evening, just don't let the night go without you having some one on one uh, time. Even if it's for twenty minutes, just get that time in so that they know exactly that how much you love them and that you're connected to them on another level to where they know that this time is only about them. Absolutely. Undivided, uninterrupted time. And I'm just going to follow up with some plugs from me, um, not only as a mother, but also as an aunt with teenagers in my life. So one, be mindful of Snapchat. So now Snapchat is the new drug dealing social media platform. I had no idea, but one of my good girlfriends who has two kids older than my daughter told me about it. I was like, what? I had no idea. So just keep, keep that in mind and be very in tune with your kid's cell phone. Having a cell phone is a privilege because if they're not paying a cell phone bill, they do not have a say in how you how you manage their phone when you confiscate their phone or et cetera. If they're not paying some grown bills, they don't need to have some grown responsibilities, in my opinion. The other thing I would be like, be involved with what's going on at school. You should know your kids' teachers, their counselors, and et cetera, because teachers and counselors may see something with your kid that you may not see because you're away from them for an extended period of time. So ask them questions, set up those parent-teacher conferences, look at their progress reports. Are their grades slipping? Are their grades improving? Um, all of those things, 
Are they having any troubles learning, comprehending, or et cetera? These are things you need to be mindful of. Then, like Ahmad said, plug them into sports. He said for the boys, competitive sports. For the girls, there are still competitive sports out there. You are not remiss, but there's also other activities out there. Piano, um, art, STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And then there's STEM. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I'm part of that field. I have a degree in supply chain and logistics. So if that's you, get at me, get your kids enrolled, and we could chop it up. Another thing that I would say too is don't see asking questions as a sign of weakness. See it as a sign of strength because us parents, we don't know everything and we shouldn't act like we know everything because we are model examples for our kids. They are looking at us whether or not you believe it. So be mindful of what comes out of your mouth. Be mindful of how you carry yourself, your body language, your tone, and et cetera. Because you may do something and then when your kid sees you doing something and you try to charge them up or discipline them for something that you did, it's kind of a little contradictory in my opinion. So be mindful of that. Kids are very observant and they're like sponges. So they soak everything up, whether it's in the home or outside of the home. So keep that in mind. Now let's get back to Mr. Ahmad and we're jumping into our CTA, our call to action for the segment. So Ahmad, once our audience hears all of the gems you have dropped today, what do you want them to do? What is your website and what is your tagline to hold them accountable? Okay, so you can find me at uh, ahmadvital.com. That's A-H-M-A-R-D.com. Uh, there's a contact form at the bottom. I'd like to hear from some of you. If you have a, a teen who is struggling right now, um, we're working with a lot of teens and young adults right now, really working with the demographic of, uh, of youngsters coming out of college, going into the real world, and even some who are coming out of high school and into college. That transitional period, um, that's really where my my new book now what focuses on uh, as far as making those transitions uh, it focuses on five key areas which is reflect decide plan act and seek and so you want to you want to be able to activate all of those and obviously if you reach out to me we can we can get you a copy of that if for, for those who are tuned in for your audience uh, they can go to booknowwhat.com booknowwhat Dot, dot com. Uh, get your preview copy. Love for you to go out and purchase one as well, but at least you can get a feel for what the book for what the book represents. And you'll see that whatever transition you're trying to make, um, that book will be able to help you get there. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm available on all the social media platforms. It's just a mod be tall. There's no alias. There's no, you know, no, no tagline or anything like that. It's just it's just me. It's just a mod be tall. Um, love to hear from uh, a lot of them. And if I had to say a, a call to action, I'll give a, if I may, I'll give a call to action and I'll give a quote, if that's okay. Um, the call to action is, is that I want you all to go out and establish your community. Um, regardless, regardless of what age you are, regardless if you are, you know, in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, I want you to go out and find three people Three people who can pour into you. Um, so maybe somebody who's an expert in your field. Uh, someone who's, you know, regardless of what religion you are, if you're a Christian, find find a pastor, minister, deacon, someone in your life. And then have someone who's what I call an accountability ally, um, like a mentor. Someone who can hold you accountable. Someone who loves you, but is not afraid to check you, right? I don't want someone, I don't want a yes person in your life. I want someone who's going to properly look at you and say, you know what? You're not quite getting it done in a way this, 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 that goes along with the goals you set. Someone, when you write your goals down at the beginning of the year, you hand them and say, you hold me accountable for this. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to find three key people to be able to, to mentor and pour into you and give you, your, um, give you what you need. So build that community. And the last thing I'll leave you with is a quote uh, from my father. Um, he said it to me when I was very young and I've never forgot it. And he said, Live the best life you can, then give it all away. Live the best life you can, then give it all away. If what you are doing in your life is not based on serving the needs of others, you need to look in the mirror very closely. We are here to serve one another. We are here to love one another. You are here to be a difference, not to, this is the, the game of life is not about you. 
I know, I know they've told you, you're a one man show, you did it on your own. You're not telling the truth. Everyone had to get there from some help from somewhere. It is time for you to give back. It is time for you to serve the needs of others. Sometimes to the point where you're doing it without looking for a return from that person. Absolutely. So once you go out and give the, and do some giving, do some serving and for goodness sakes, let's uh, let's turn the ties on some of these these social and societal things that are going on, and maybe we'll just get to the point where we actually get along a little bit better. Yes, and thank you so much, Ahmad, for coming on to Gems Podcast, dropping those gems, and holding the audience accountable. Audience, make sure you like, comment, follow, and subscribe to the podcast. We're on 40 plus audio platforms. You could see the video to this recording by going to our YouTube channel, which is Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp. And my big ask, ASK, is for brand sponsors and listener support. It is paid sponsorship. So if you want to have your products, your services, and link arms with me, where we could go further and faster to create synergies, because collaboration is not the new competition. It is the new way for us to advance and grow together. Please reach out to me. My contact information will be in the show notes along with a mod's information. So until the next guest, next segment, peace, love, and lots of blessings. You got this. We believe in you. Now spread the word to other people so they can know they are not forgotten and they are here for a purpose.